correctness ruining comedy? Chances are, if you've spoken to an old white guy in the past few months, you've heard a phrase like this. Political correctness is ruining comedy. What am I supposed to do when I point at something? Not laugh at it? Ridiculous. So today, let's talk about political correctness. What is it? And is it slashing away at our freedom of speech like a top-billed star in a terrible Friday the 13th knockoff? We'd call it Saturday the 30th, and it would take place in a European discotheque. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Political correctness is the act of choosing your words to avoid offending people. As you know, or could probably assume, the English language has a storied history of making up words to call people who aren't white guys. And for the people who those words were directed at, it really, really sucked to hear. Political correctness became a derogatory term itself in the 1980s, when old school stand-up comedians could say whatever they want and were essentially treated like rock stars for it. It was very in vogue to say racist, misogynistic, and, because it's the 80s, AIDS-phobic stuff, and you'd get the laugh because you were, ooh, being naughty. My favorite example of this is Andrew Dice Clay, if only because I get to mention that he was the very first contestant fired on season two of Celebrity Apprentice. Leveraging political incorrectness for comedy is a lot like another popular 80s relic, cocaine. Back then, everybody was doing it, but nowadays whipping that shit out at a party just seems kind of pathetic. Using politically incorrect language is an intentionally alienating practice. That reminds the people hearing it that, at the end of the day, their humanity can be boiled down to a single, horrible epithet. And that really sucks, especially when it's such a preventable behavior. So we know what political correctness is, and we know when it became a slur itself. But the question remains, is it ruining comedy? What this argument really boils down to is your definition of free speech. Namely, that everyone has a right to it, even the people who don't agree with you. Comedy specifically thrives on being able to creatively express an opinion in a surprising or thoughtful way. Making a joke completely falls under your right to free speech, but the audience reacting to that joke falls under their right to free speech. And that doesn't mean heckling, I mean responding in a broader way, like writing a review online, or talking to you about it after the show, that kind of thing. Only assholes heckle kids, don't do it. The more you know. For example, let's say I'm doing a stand-up show and I'm doing a bit about pasta. I hate pasta. F your linguine. I don't want to eat it because to me it tastes like the Pillsbury Doughboy is shitting rubberized flour down my throat. That is me creatively expressing my very real opinion which falls under my freedom of speech rights. Now, say you love linguine. You're linguine's number one fan and let's face it, linguine has been the number two noodle on everybody's list ever since that asshole spaghetti booked that gig in Lady and the Tramp. You have the right to say to me, hey, just so you know, Linguini is kind of the underdog here. Remember Lady and the Tramp? When's the last time you saw Linguini being portrayed fairly in a movie? Why you gotta add to the Linguini hate? Now that criticism is obviously negative, but that doesn't change my right to perform my pasta act. I just have to perform it, knowing that some people are going to think that way about Linguini every time I do it. But the important thing to note is, nobody is trying to stop me from performing that act. They're just letting me know that it's a little bit offensive. And what I do with that information when I receive it will completely depend on how my ego digest negative audience feedback. It can be hard for creative people, especially comedians, to hear negative feedback about something they worked very, very hard on. Remember how I said in the 80s stand-ups were treated like rock stars? Yeah, nobody said no to them. This is a new thing for a lot of those old school guys. And instead of digesting criticism in the way that a comedian is supposed to, because remember, your job is to make the audience laugh, they're kicking up a tantrum like a toddler in the Disney store who just found out that that singing Elsa doll that they've been coveting for months is completely sold out. And they just can't let it go, let it go. Please don't sue me, Disney. So no, political correctness is not ruining comedy. It's actually making it a hell of a lot smarter. When you don't have exhausted old tropes and gimmicky, shocking punchlines to fall back on, you have to think of more creative ways to execute your primary directive as a comedian, which is to make the audience laugh. And as an added bonus, there could be more people to hear your material, because you're not chasing groups away with exclusionary comedy. About, for example, violence against women. Celebrity apprentice loser Andrew X. Clay. Oh gosh. And just to say it one more time to be completely crystal clear, there is nothing wrong with you performing your dusty old crap from 1986. Nobody is suppressing your right to do that. But there's a good chance that people are going to tell you that it is not funny anymore. Because that's their opinion and they're allowed to have it as much as you're allowed to get up on stage and say whatever dumb shit you're trying to say. Just remember that it is the comedian's job to try and make the audience laugh and if you fail to deliver enough, after a while, there's not gonna be anyone in the audience anymore. What do you guys think? Is political correctness ruining comedy? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, you can click subscribe and make a new one every single week. You can also follow me on social media down below and there's another video in the bottom of the left-hand corner for you to check out if you wanna see a new one right now. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.